Hey guys, we're back with unboxing number two. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make maybe something of a regular thing out of this. Although I'll ruin the suspense right, suspense right now and say, yeah, it's another book actually. They're not all gonna be books, but it's another book. As we see, a package from Indigo. It's a bit thicker than last time, so that's exciting. Got scissors just in case I might need them, but the other part is easy enough. Let's get the glue here. But we do have some external plastic, so what have we got? It's a Harry Potter book. It's the second Harry Potter book. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. But this is the mini... How do you say it? Mini Lima edition? These are special sort of illustrated editions. They don't just have pictures in them, but even have sort of like pop-up... Um, pop-up stuff. Remember the old pop-up books you had when I was a kid? So I will use the scissors here to get rid of the exterior plastic. So why is it the second one and not the first one, the Philosopher's Stone? Well, the simple answer is money. These are expensive books, and I, this one happened to be on for a better price on the uh, Indigo site at the time, so I jumped on it. Now we can get a better look at it. Oh, let's see. Let's get a thing in the back here. Welcome to Hogwarts. Mina Lima, or however you say it, presents the second Harry Potter adventure, fully illustrated in color. That's with a U and featuring eight incredible interactive elements, including a pop-up Whomping Willow. Prepare to be dazzled by this stunning new edition of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. J.K. Rowling's complete and unabridged text is accompanied by imaginative illustrations on nearly every page, plus eight inventive paper-engineered features. Oh, that's what we call pop-ups. We call them paper-engineered features. I'm already afraid I'm going to, like, mess them up. Explore the Weasley's Burrow, travel via the flu network, and even pull mandrakes from their pots. Designed and illustrated by... Mina Lima, the award-winning studio behind the iconic graphics of the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts, Fantastic Beasts films, this spectacular new edition will be treasured by fans of all ages. A beautiful addition to any collector's bookshelf. It's also the perfect way to introduce this beloved series to a new generation of readers. So let's take a look and see what the art style is like in this. I am interested. So yeah, you've got some like tissue paper in here, and I don't know if you're supposed to always keep that there, or if that was just for the... So at least uh, so this is a book, so this will be a little more visual than other unboxings of book, though. Even though I'm going to show this sort of at weird angles. Some of the stuff. Nice, beautiful splash page there. Table of contents. So here's the first... I'm not going to show everything, but here's the very first illustration for the first chapter. The Worst Birthday. You see Potter at the table with the Dursleys. What's nice is while they did have input in the movies, these aren't necessarily informed by the movies. You notice that... Um, if maybe you know, so that Dudley's blonde, which he's not in the films, but in the books, Dudley is described as blonde. So let's get past some of these. So then you have some partial illustrations too, not on the full page. Dudley and Harry in the backyard there. I'm not going to show everything, like I said, but let's get to the, uh, so we have a few different things. There's a lot of them, Dudley. I want to get to the very first paper, what do they call them? They called them... In paper engineered features. I guess they're called paper engineered features. So let's see if we can get to one. See, so yeah, like, am I supposed to? I'm already afraid of how I'm supposed to use these. Like yours. Okay, I'm gonna put this lightly aside. Keep it. But there is the burrow. The Weasley's house, as you can see. You see, it's looking a little 3D because it is paper engineered, but I'm afraid. I'm not sure how you're supposed to use them. If you tug on, I don't want to tug on it or anything. So I'm going to skip that one. And see if I can find one that's a little more obvious. Because I know they say you can sort of operate them and maybe make them move. I'm afraid to do that with this. So, okay, here we go. Here's the Whomping Willow. So how's this go? Let's be very careful. Because this is all very delicate. And you don't want to mess it up. And this is kind of a weird unboxing for me because I honestly don't know how to operate this. I mean, so here it is, like as it is, if you just open the page, right? There's Hogwarts in the background and the Whomping Willow, which Ron and Harry has crashed into in the flying Ford car. Now, how is this supposed to work? I mean, these are meant with kids in mind too. I mean, kids, adults, whoever. I'm just really afraid to touch it or do anything. 
Well, this makes it 3D if I do this, but uh, I don't want to pull too much on it. I guess just that. I don't know, that's not capturing it very well, is it? But there you go. So I don't know if it moves more than that or not. So, replace its tissue paper because, I don't know, maybe you need it, maybe you don't. Here's one that you can actually pull on. Okay, that's... Okay, that one's a little, this one's a little more simple. This is uh, some of the portraits in Hogwarts Castle, which of course are known to have sort of like living pictures in them. As you can see, you can pull this across, see, and move them. So that one's a little simple and straightforward. So at least that one I can figure out and handle. So I will eventually get, uh, this is the, yeah, most that are out now, right now. I don't think there's a, I don't think the third one has been made yet. But there are some really lovely illustrations here. The Death Day Party, there's Nearly Headless Nick and some of the ghosts. So there's, I mean, a lot of stuff in here, of course, being the books that, that you don't get to see in the movie, because the movies cut out stuff. The movies are pretty good, I like most of the movies. But once you get into the, the first two aren't that bad. Once you get into the third you, and the books get longer, you really have to start cutting things out. Which I'm not a fan of, but I understand that's what you have to do for movie. Okay, so here's... Oh, this is elaborate. Oh, God. I'm afraid of how to make this one work. I believe... Yeah, this is the... So this is the stone gargoyle that guards the en secret entrance to Dumbledore's office. And the whole thing is, if you say the right password, he jumps aside. Now, this lifts up like this, and I see that there's sort of like a doorway here. I don't know how to do. I pull. I'm really afraid to pull. Uh, if I take two fingers. Okay. Yeah, not the type of thing that's easy to show on camera. And again, I'm terrified of this stuff. Like, I'm really happy to have this book, but I'm also terrified of ruining it. You know, I would not recommend getting this for small children, because they will probably make a mess of it. It's just in the middle. I think I could take this out. This just... We got like a wheel here that turns. Uh, I have I don't even know what this is about, but it's kind of cool. You got like a wheel of faces, and that is turnable, so you can change the um, features on the faces. I don't even know what this is in relating to. What chapter is this? The oh, the college use potion. Oh, okay, so it's supposed to sort of show Ron and uh, Ron and Harry's transformation into the Slytherin students, uh, Crab and Goyle. So that's kind of interesting. So what is it? We'll skip out again. There's a lot of stuff I could show that I want. Every chapter has like a chapter page, the secret diary, when Harry gets Riddle's diary. So let's jump ahead. Okay, chapter 17. So what's going on here? This is the air slogan. Okay, this is one. So how does this work? It's a statue. And I'm so afraid of touching it. Like, I don't know where you're supposed to pull. Look at that, okay. This one I figured out. This is, so this is the secret entrance to the Chamber of Secrets in the girls' bathroom. I don't know how to do this from this angle. But you can pull this, and it's a yeah, snake comes out. Pretty cool. All right, so I mean, I've never really, except going back to when I was a little kid and had some dinosaur books that, you know, have pop-ups. Never had a book like this, so it's pretty pretty interesting and exciting. So I'm really happy to have this. I'll try to collect all of them. But as but they're not cheap, they're pricey, so what I'll just sort of have to do is kind of watch the, the site. The Indigo site seems to kind of randomly put stuff on, not even sale, just put the price down. So right now, Philosopher's Stone is full price, which Canadian is like $54.99, so that's a lot. I got this for significantly less, plus um, I do have a membership that gives me always, I always get 10% off anything ever, anyway, so that helps too. So this is the Chamber of Secrets, very nice. So this is my third <laughs> version of this book. Um, I do have the the hardcovers, uh, I don't have the first one, but I have of the three, just the, the normal illustrated ones. So here's the fourth one, and most current, uh, the fifth one's not out yet, so it's Goblin Flyer. These are illustrated by uh, illustrator Jim McKay, Jim K, I'll send the K, K, and he does some really great stuff in all these. I got these very much in the same way, sort of just sort of 
watching and waiting. This is nice. And here's some interesting stuff. Like in, in addition to like drawings of stuff that like scenes in the movie, sometimes he'll do something that looks like a page in a book. So of course this is the book that features um, the various dragons that the champions have to get past in the first task of the Triwizard Tournament. And while we get to see the whole scene of Harry dealing with the Hungarian Horntail, um, there's, you know, three other dragons, and the one that I believe Cedric has to get past is known as the Swedish Snort Snort Short Snout. The Swedish Short Snout. So here's like a cool, see, it's almost like it's like a book about dragons. So there's something like that usually at least once per book. So these are very cool too, but anyway. So maybe when I get the first, ah, uh, I don't think I'll do an unboxing for these. As I said, I have two, I have Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, and this one. These also exist now in um, paperback form, so you can get them a little cheaper. I got the first one as a hardcover, so for me, for consistency's sake, I need them all to be hardcovers, because I hate mixing and matching. I hate that so much. As I said, the bane of my existence with a series like Harry Potter, with so many different editions come out, is I don't need them all. Like, I'm not a fanatic. But I would love to have ones that actually match up. And I do to a certain extent. I have the, I have the initial Canadian editions, which look almost identical to the British, of uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I think. Yeah, because I got them in a, in a box set together. Um, what's funny is my only current copy of... Uh, maybe I should have brought some of them into the room to show, but oh well. Of the original of uh, Philosopher's Stone is the American version, which of course was called the Sorcerer's Stone. I don't even know how I wound up with it. It's not in great shape, but it's the American edition. And I feel, and I don't know if they changed it over time, but originally the American editions like really messed them up because they really kind of Americanized them. They changed all the British spelling back to American, but they even changed some of the terms. Like at one point when they're talking about football, they changed it to soccer. And I think that's dumb, right? Like, shouldn't American kids who are reading, they could learn a little something while reading. Oh, the British kids call soccer this, and some of that stuff, like, and some of the pronunciation, like, um, Seamus, who I guess is Irish, he would refer to his mother as his ma'am, me ma'am, and they would just change it to mom, as if they were all worried about, like, confusing American readers. I mean, that's not giving people any credit at all, but luckily if they don't do that in the Canadian, Canadian editions, they read the same way as the British. So I don't know if eventually they change that or not, but the, the first one, was the biggest change because they even changed the they even changed the name of the book from Philosopher's Stone to Sorcerer's Stone, which in the context of the story doesn't even make sense. But uh, Scholastic or whoever the hell it was was like so Philosopher's too boring. We need something more exciting. Word. But anyway, so I'm getting off topic and things. Oh no, I don't know where this was supposed to go. I want to I want to have all these replaced in the proper spot. Anyway, I'll figure that out later. So there you go, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the <laughs> Mina Lima edition. Very cool. I mean, not a casual thing, more of a collector's item. People who are, like, big fans of the series, of course, which I always have been. Okay, so thanks a lot for being with me on this unboxing. Maybe the next one actually won't be a book, but I mean, at least this one is more visual than most book unboxings. There's more I probably could have shown you. I was just, you know, since it's an unboxing, I haven't had t any time to look at it myself. This is the, my first time seeing it, too, so maybe I, I couldn't do, like, a a run through where I'm testing out some of these um, paper things, these pop ups. I'm just so afraid of breaking anything, but at least you got to see a little bit of it, so thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you all next time for the next really exciting, I'm sure, unboxing. Peace out, bye bye.